Greetings and welcome to a new video about MOSFET differential amplifier. This is our example number six. In this example, we will discuss the more advanced variation of our MOSFET differential amplifier, where we see both an active load and also the cascode current source all together. So this circuit will be without any resistor in the circuit. So we will see here the cascode current source. You see that that is only constructed by the transistors. And there's also an active load here given by this PMOS transistors. We will see that step by step in our calculations and also verify this in SPICE simulations. So let's look at our circuit. We have here in total five transistors to create this cascode current source. All of them are N-channel enhancement type MOSFETs. The differential pair is created by N1 and N2, also N-type N-channel enhancement MOSFETs and the active load is created by the M8 and M9. They are the P-channel enhancement type MOSFETs again. The parameters for the MOSFET are shown here. You see the threshold voltages and also the K sub N or P, depending on N or the P-channel, and also the lambdas for each of them. What we also have is that our tail current here, Ix, will be 600 microamps. This is what we have discussed previously in a separate video about the cascode current source. And the reference current we use here is one milliamps. VDD and VSS is also given. So, and we have now these three equ uh, questions again. In this case, single-ended differential mode voltage gain, and also the single-ended common mode voltage gain, and then so the single-ended common mode rejection ratio based on these two results. So let's look at our solutions. First, we start with the calculations, but before we do that, let's also designate the currents here, a DC current IRF here, and there is an IX here, so this will be one milliamp, this will be 600 microamps. And there's also IS1, this is the source current of M1, and IS2, this is the source current of M2. This will be, IS1 and will be equal to IS2 because this is a symmetric device, and this IS, IX, the tail current will be then split into two equal parts. The gate currents are zero because the MOSFET is acting here as a capacitor for DC. So the drain current of M1 is equal to the source current of M1 and drain current of M2 will be the source current of M2. Okay. So let's look at the solutions. As said, drain currents of M1 and M2 will split in two equal parts. So that means ID1 is equal to ID2. There will be then ID5 over 2 or this is the ID5 or IX over 2. And since IX is set to 600 micrograms, so we of course then for the ID1 and ID2, 300 microamps. The transconductance of M2 is GM2. That will be given by this expression, where you see that we need a KN2, the capital letter KN2, and ID2, so DC drain current. The KN2 is related to that small letter KN prime, and also there's W over L of this M2. So we have W over L, which is just this multiplication factor, M is 1, so it means W over L is 1, and K sub N of 2 prime is also given here as 50 milliamps per square volt. So if you now substitute this here, you will get 25 milliamps per square volt. We know what ID2 is, which is 300 microamps, so when you substitute that in here, you get here 5.477 millisiemens. Now, looking at the single and differential mode voltage gain now, that means actually looking at the VO2 over the VID, which is then the differential signal between the two gates of M1 and M2. This is now given by this expression, which you see is actually that we have again a minus because of the inversion, and GM2, which is the transconductance of M2, and times the parallel combination of the impedance or resistance seen at this node, and that is actually the output impedance of this M2 and output impedance of this M8. So they are now parallel. So we need to calculate this, and that is done using the channel length modulation. And now this is also the formula. So the effect of the channel length modulation needs to be uh, taken into account. And the formula for RO2 is given by this. And since VDS2 is most of the time much smaller than 1 over lambda, this is approximated by this. And we have now 1 over lambda 2, which is 1 over 0 0.01. That's actually for this. Divided by ID2, which is 300 microamps, you get here 333 kiloohms. And the similar form for RO8, that is given by this expression. But we know that RID 
2 is equal to ID8, because this is ID8, but it's also IS8. So we can again use that, and we know that I, uh, the lambda 8, that's as shown here, 0 0.02, divided by again 300 microamps will give you now the half of this one, 167 kilo ohms. Now taking all this together and also substitute that in this expression, you get now here a gain of minus 608 approximately. Let's go now to the single ended common mode voltage gain in a similar form again. We look at the VO2, this node, divided by the common mode input. Common mode input means the gates are connected together to one source, which is now called VIC. And that is given by this expression. What you see here are again this gain formula. But you also see here two times RO. Now, we have the RO, which is actually the resistance looking here in the drain node of M5. And that is given by this expression, as we have discussed in the previous example about the cascode current source. You see here the RO5 and also GM5 with also RO3. So we need here three parameters. What is this RO5 and RO3 and also GM5? Let's start with RO3, similar to the other two. We don't know what VDS3 is, but we can also again approximate this by only using the lambda because one over lambda 3 is much, much larger than VS3 most of the time. And we have now ID3 is of course equal to ID5, which is IX, and then you get now 167 kilo ohms. In a similar form for RO5, well, again approximation by leaving out those VDS, that will give you again also 167 kilo ohms. GM5 is related to the KM5 and ID5, and now KM5 is similar to KN2, one half KN. 5 prime, which is a small letter, and W over L 5 times the ID5. The ID5 is IX, and W over L is this multiplication factor, which is here 148.81. And the KN5 prime is shown here, which is then 0.05 times 10 to the power minus 3 amps per square volt. And that is then given here, or 50 microamps per square volt. Now, when you now calculate this, you get here 2.988 millisiemens. Now, we have now the necessary information here, and we can now move on and then calculate now the RO, which is now here, 83.67 mega ohms, or almost 84 mega ohms. Now, let's now substitute that in here. We have now this expression, and when you now work it out, you get here minus 6.64 times 10 to, pi, 10 to power minus 4 as the gain, common mode gain for single end, which is quite small. So it's almost quite very close to zero. Okay. Now take all this together and then looking at the question C, which is our single end at common mode rejection ratio. Now taking the ADS and ACS here, which is then the connect, connect uh, the ratio, that will give you this, and this will be then 916 times 10 to power 3, which is an approximately 119.2 dB. Okay. Let's now go to the simulation results, which is our DC analysis first. Now we know that ID1 and ID2 is equal to each other, so that's the 300 microamps. Is that the case? This is for differential mode, and this is for common mode, so left side differential mode, right hand side is common mode. You see indeed that the IRF is 1 milliamp, 600 microam, similar for the common mode operation. You see you saw the common mode operation here. They are connected, the gates, M1 and M2. You see here the ID1 and ID2 are exactly 300 microamps, the similar is for the common mode operation, so we can say this is checked for DC analysis. Going to the transient response, now looking first to the differential mode, the blue line is our input, which is in this case 10 micro volts peak and 1 kilohertz as the frequency, and this dark red line is our VOD, or this uh, pink line in this case, which is our output. In this case, we can say that the Peak, peak value of the drain voltage of M2 is given by 12.451 million uh, volts. But we apply peak peak 20 micro volts peak peak. So when you now do that here, so output divided by the input, you get here minus 623, and that's very close to actually close to minus 608. So you can say this is perfectly fine. Looking at the common mode circuit, this is now the common mode circuit. This is the plot for the common mode. In this case, we see uh, the following VO2, which is this red line. This 
peak peak value is quite small and that is determined here which is here uh, 213.7 nanovolts peak peak and we applied 200 millivolts in this case peak peak and that is actually also where we stay linear so vo2 or vic is then in this case minus 1.07 times 10 to the power minus 6. so we see here uh, yeah, uh, a significant difference between the actual calculation and also the simulation. The simulator gives us lower common mode gain, but we have some error here. And the actual source for this error is not really clear for me, but maybe you have an idea. So please let me know in the comment section. So this is actually, a, let's say, an error in our calculations probably. But altogether, we know that our differential mode single-ended gain is correct. And we have achieved a better common mode gain, of course, but not in agreement with our calculations. And the common mode direction ratio is also calculated, but in this case, this is much better than we have calculated. All right, guys, this is our example number six about this uh, cascode current source and also the active loaded differential pair using these M1 and M2. If you have any questions, comments about this example, please let me know. I will try to answer them as soon as possible. Don't forget to like and share these videos so that you can reach more people for these interesting topics. Thanks for your cooperation and see you next time in another video.